I'm Pat. Um, I'm an archaeologist. Um, hello. Yeah, is there a start button? Yeah. Uh, full, there should be a full screen start button. Um, I'm at the University of York, and I want to talk to you once it loads about um, archaeology and Wikipedia. A view from the bridge, as it were, because I'm kind of halfway between the two. I'm talking to you, advocating archaeology, and I will, in a few weeks, be at archaeology conferences advocating Wikipedia or Wiki Project. It's still loading. It's still loading, but uh, there we go. Um, uh, sorry, you can deal with that the pictures. Go and look at it. It's, it's, uh, you can find it on the talk page for the lightning talks already. It's there. Um, so archaeology is done in three ways, in, certainly in all developed countries. Um, it's done as research archaeology, which is the, t the type that we're all familiar with, um, which is universities and other research institutions going out, doing stuff, fun stuff, exciting sites in the summer. They get in the papers. They get lots of attention. Um, but 90% of archaeology, certainly in Europe, is actually developer-led archaeology. So it's led when somebody builds a road, somebody digs a canal, somebody puts a swimming pool in their back garden. At some point in that planning process, um, an archaeologist will look at the planning application. They might say that no archaeology needs to be done. They might say we need full excavation, there's a Bronze Age cemetery here or something. Um, but you, it means that there are several... Uh, communities of archaeologists which Wikipedia or uh, wiki projects uh, can engage with. The final group of archaeologists are non-professional archaeologists, so uh, community groups, um, those doing outreach into schools, um, and you know they're, they're kind of grassroots organizations. Um, they are organized in kind of similar ways to, to wikis. So I want to talk very quickly about two ways that we can engage with these groups. So firstly, bottom up, and this is mostly, I think, for engaging with um, those community groups. There's lots of like local archaeology societies, any you know, counties in England or little regions in, in areas of Europe or towns will have a historical or an archaeological society. They map very well onto local Wikimedia projects, you know, people who are researching their local area. But it seems, as far as I can see, certainly for Britain, that nobody between these are connecting up. One of us could go in, facilitate a workshop, start a dialogue. These uh, local community groups have got no ways. They, they, of, of, they're, even the best of them are pretty rubbish at using the web, and they've got very little uh, ways to disseminate their information and help generate in, uh, uh, attention to their own interest in... Um, in archaeology and what have you. The other way, which I guess is uh, a little more radical, but, but ties in more to glam archive kind of style stuff, is, is data mining. There are big data repositories. Um, the ADS in uh, the UK, Edna in um, Holland, and TDAR in the US. The links are all there if you go through. And historic environment records. The historic environment records are the government kept um, uh, records that that give the statutory protection to the monuments. For example, the Dutch Wiki Loves Monuments project started with a historic environment monuments list, and that's how they, how they built their project. Um, I'm not telling you anything that's rocket science here. This is all stuff that, uh, that GLAM is good at already. I just want to kind of subtly adjust your perception of what archaeology could be as a source for Wiki stuff. Um, so that's it. And that's me. You can find me um, if you get your phone up in time, um, or, or, or just click through from the talk page, and uh, and you'll find me. Yeah.